The Mavic 3 Enterprise Thermal Drone combines functionality with efficiency and ease of use. It provides smaller workforces and public safety teams with the ability to scale their operation while staying fiscally responsible. In this video, I'm going to visit with a public safety official about the Mavic 3 Enterprise Thermal, and I'm gonna get his input on how this drone could assist in serving our community. This drone can be used for so many different things, but I think personally its greatest impact on a broad scale will be in the world of search and rescue and firefighting. Hey, welcome back everyone. And for those of you here for the first time, thank you so much for stopping by to learn more about the DJI Mavic 3 Enterprise Thermal. Now, if you haven't watched my first video about this versatile commercial drone, I invite you to check it out. I'll put it up here in the note cards, and then I'll also link it in the video description for your convenience. There's a lot of detailed information about this drone in that video. Now, in addition to having an impressive battery life, exceptional wind tolerance, a great zoom camera, and more, I think the most valuable feature on the M3T is the thermal capabilities. It's outfitted with a 640 by 512 resolution thermal camera. The M3T can be useful for energy audits, transportation, and other infrastructure tasks. But it is my belief that with what this drone can do and the price at which you can get it, that many smaller public safety teams will be adding this drone to their arsenal in the next few months. So I wanted to take some time today to visit with one of our local rural firefighters and pick his brain about how the M3T could be beneficial for them. Okay, so I have something to show you today. Okay. Remember the uh, Matrice 30 we went through last year? Mm -hmm. The big so, fancy expensive one. Yeah, the big fancy expensive <laughs> one. So this is a, it's a smaller tool for departments like yours, like okay. a rural fire department, smaller entities that could benefit from, uh, from a drone with the capabilities that the M30 has, but maybe doesn't have the budget or the need for something as massive as mm -hmm. the M30, you know? And, uh, and so DJI came out with the Mavic 3 Enterprise. And basically what this is, this is a, this is a Mavic 3, which is a consumer grade drone, mm -hmm. but then it's upgraded to a camera system that has a zoom camera, a wide angle camera, and a thermal camera. Before we got the M30T up in the air to show Stefan what it could do, we visited briefly about kind of where this drone sits in the Enterprise lineup. I let him know it's right in the middle of the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advance that was released almost two years ago, and then the M30T that came out earlier this year. You know, it's got a better camera system, signal strength, the stability and the flight time, all make it much more capable than the M2EA. And although it's not weatherproof or have a double battery system like the M30T, it's much more portable and convenient. And the price point is more attractive for limited budgets. This is an enterprise drone that you can literally fit in your pocket. And it also fits perfectly into the middle of the DJI Enterprise system. So, Stefan, have you guys used any drones in your line of work? Have you used them at all for anything? Our department has not. We have utilized Burlington's one. They have a small one that does have kind of thermal capability. It's very granular and not very good quality. Okay. Um, no zoom on it and very short lifespan. That okay. was used out at the BNSF train derailment yeah. a few months ago. Yeah. Uh, that would have been so. a great for any, any more capable drone with the zoom and the better thermal because half the time we had no idea what we were going into. Sure. Yeah. I mean, for you guys, being a rural fire department, being out in areas where there's, you know, fires that could be spread much further than you can see mm -hmm. by being on the ground. So how could you see a drone like the Mavic 3 Enterprise being used on a day-to-day -day basis or during emergencies for your situation? Day-to-day -day basis, not really so much in the way of use. It'd be more of those emergency situations. The, the wildland fires would be a very big one where we need a big overhead view of what it's doing. Sure. Compared to just kind of guessing, okay, it looks like it's going that way, but really it's going that way. Sure. We want trucks to stay kind of in that general area to kind of fend it off. Mm -hmm. um, another good thing for that would be we can kind of get an idea of the topography now versus we have guys just willy-nilly running through a field and all of a sudden they found a slough and they're stuck. Sure. 
Yep. Um, yeah. Other great uses we could see is, doesn't happen often for us, thank you, is um, search and rescue operations. Absolutely. Where we have to go find a uh, lost elderly, lost kid, um, be it winter time, they got out of the vehicle, walked, or like in this park setup, kid just wandered away from mom, dad, and now we have to go find them. Yeah, the benefit is getting some surveillance and some recon from the air. And so you mentioned, you know, walking in the park, maybe families. We're right across from one of the most popular trails in our community here. Mm -hmm. And so I thought this would be a good area for us to fly the Mavic 3 Enterprise and just kind of get an overview of what it looks like and maybe just kind of do a mock scenario of, uh, of, you know, maybe a family and kids gets lost chasing a, a fox or something. Mm -hmm. I actually saw a fox there this morning, Did so you? that was pretty mm -hmm. cool. So. I then proceeded to take Stefan through the pre-flight process. I showed him the health management system where you can check everything is good to go, like return to home height, obstacle avoidance distances, maximum flight distance, and so on. And he found that to be very efficient and easy to decipher, even for someone that doesn't have much experience in flying a drone. It just took a matter of two minutes, and he was very familiar with how to change all of those settings. Now, he was concerned about those settings being changed, possibly by someone who doesn't know what they're doing. And I did inform him that whomever is flying does need to have their Part 107 remote pilot certificate and they should be very familiar with the drone and the app and all the settings before they launch. We then proceeded to launch the drone and fly over to the nature trail to demonstrate what a typical scenario might look like. Now there was no one at the park at the time, so I couldn't really provide him with an example of you know what it would look like, but I did go back a little bit later and I found someone there and I found what would be kind of a similar scenario to like a lost child and, you know, chasing their dog through the trail system. You know, I could see that's how a child might get lost. But um, and then I did demonstrate the side by side feature where you could view the thermal camera and the zoom camera at the same time. And you want to get a better look, then we can do a side by side hit SBS. Then you got the zoom camera over here and you got the thermal over here. And then this is where you can. You know, so they are in. independent of each other. Okay. Yep. Yep. So you can run them side by side. And he noted how valuable and useful that would be for a search mission because, you know, even though you can see the presence of heat and movement with the thermal camera, you really don't know much detail of what you're looking at until you use a visual camera. So having them side by side is just really, really important. And then I demonstrated the zoom capabilities of the thermal camera as well. And we discussed the value of using the loudspeaker in a search and rescue scenario. Now, Stefan did have a few concerns about the Mavic 3 Enterprise because he was quite fortunate enough to check out the Matrice 30 when I had it last spring. What about for some of like the environments we could have it in, like calm day like here, but we're out long enough in the wind? Uh, I have flown anything like that. I have flown the Mavic 3 Enterprise thermal in 36 mile per hour winds, and it was able to maintain a hover mm -hmm. at 250 feet with 36 miles per hour, which is very, very good mm -hmm. for a drone like this. So for, for, for what this weighs, it can handle that GPS lock. I had up to 30 satellites locked on at one time, and that's gonna keep that incredibly, keep that drone in position. So mm -hmm. it could handle most wind conditions. It cannot handle moisture, mm -hmm. can't fly it in the rain or the wet okay. snow. It can handle a light snow. Mm -hmm. I have flown the, um, the Mavic 3, the consumer version in snow, it's done fine. Mm -hmm. um, Sub-freezing temperatures, you can fly beyond what the specifications call for. You can go a little bit lower. The biggest concern is when you transfer it from an environment like that, if it's five below and you bring it into your shop where it's 65, there's gonna be condensation. So you just have to be really careful when you're transferring mm -hmm. between two different temperature ranges. But uh, but yeah, it does quite well. Again, I proceeded to remind him of the budget restrictions that may be an obstacle for many departments like his and that the Mavic 3 Enterprise covers most use cases and it provides great value for what it offers. In my previous discussions with the rural fire chief, he has expressed an interest in adding a drone with thermal capabilities to their arsenal. And he's expressed how much time and resources it would save to have one, especially in wildfires 
when you have no idea what you're going into, you know, you're out in the middle of nowhere and it just, you just need that overhead surveillance to see to where to put your people, like how to be more efficient. But as we all know, budgets are really, really tight these days, more than ever. And the needs of departments like his are many. So a drone is kind of considered to be a luxury. However, the attractive price point of the Mavic 3 Thermal prompts more consideration from the decision makers. And that's why I think this will be acquired by so many smaller public safety teams across the world. Now, is it leaps and bounds? I know some of you are gonna ask, is it way better than the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced that was released just a couple of years ago? No, I don't think it's leaps and bounds better. It's a little bit better in a few different ways. If you have the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced, don't upgrade, there's really no reason to. You know, the camera system on both drones is very similar, except for those improved zoom capabilities on the M3T. But if you're in the market for a thermal drone, you don't have one and you'd like to get one, then this is the obvious choice because it actually costs less than the M2EA. And you're gonna get longer flight time, you're gonna get better wind resistance, you're gonna get faster charging speeds for the batteries, you're gonna have more options for attachments in the long run because the strobe is already built in to the drone. So that opens up the accessory port. So you're gonna have the strobe plus your speaker or your spotlight or whatever else attachments we're gonna see come out for this drone. So yes, it's not leaps and bounds better and it's not worth upgrading, but if you're looking, trying to decide between the two, I mean, it's pretty obvious the Mavic 3 Thermal is the way to go. So what else can the M3T be used for? Well, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, it's not just for public safety. I mean, I think that's where it's gonna end up being used the most, but it's a great tool for accomplishing tasks like roof inspections or HVAC inspections, you know, plumbing and heating, things like that, energy audits, insurance adjusting, oil and gas work, infrastructure inspections, like, there's just so many things you can do. The use cases are only limited by your imagination. Now, the number of commercial drone pilots that have thermal equipped cameras are still very, very low, which means we're kind of at the beginning still of a booming niche for commercial drone pilots. Now, I'm gonna put a link in the video description if you wanna learn more about the Mavic 3 Enterprise system and also watch that first video that I posted on it. Also comment any questions that you have about this drone or if you need advice about how to start your career in unmanned aviation, I would love to visit with you. Thank you again to DJI for sponsoring this video. Hit that like button, that thumbs up button if you got anything of value today. Subscribe to join this community. Thank you for watching today. Oh, by the way, watch this video right here next. I really think you're gonna enjoy it. Have a good one, you guys, and as always, fly safe and fly smart.